We got the we got the breast chicken, the marinade, and the potato cuts. Fuck that review, I just don't. This shit good. I adore the Yakuza games. They're silly, entertaining, emotional, and full of heart. They've made a fucking buttload of these over the past who knows how many years at this point. Um, but somehow, even now, they're still making games that are really, really good. I, I don't know how they do it, but they do. I made a video about Yakuza 7 around the time it came out because of how much it impacted me. It told such a beautiful story and had a protagonist that I could truly understand and could even relate to to some degree. Um, and because of that, I feel like I might have a bit of a bias towards the story, but it, it, Ichiban is a crazy good character, I feel. He's like in the in my top 10 at least protagonists in video games. Like, he's just that good, off just one game at first. Just one fucking game. Uh, so of course I was looking forward to the follow-up title, Infinite Wealth. Um, and you know, the teasers and the stuff. I, I didn't really watch much, but I saw that one screenshot going around of Ichiban just butt-fucking-naked looking at the sea. Uh, <laughs> and that got me pretty interested, I guess. Um, but I, I mean, I, I was already anticipating it, and we got it, and... It doesn't do everything right, but the stuff it does do right, it does fucking perfectly, I'd say. Infinite Wealth has probably the most engaging modern turn-based system I've experienced. In an era where I was getting bored of turn-based games, this got me interested again. It's unbelievably engaging taking the combat of Yakuza 7 and perfecting it. I mentioned years ago in my video review of Yakuza 7 that the combat was surprisingly decent for a first attempt in a long-running franchise, and that if they took it further, it could really be something special. And that's exactly what they did with this game. It's faster, more responsive, more rewarding and satisfying, includes more fun mechanics, and doesn't have the absurd difficulty curve Yakuza 7 had towards the end. The dynamics in combat are what make it so enjoyable. The positional attacks and tag team attacks are amazing and a huge improvement from Yakuza 7. Not being able to move in Yakuza 7's combat was its biggest restriction, and changing it to be more like Dragon Quest XI, where you can move around in a circle, adds so much. That alone already helps the flow of combat immensely immensely. Before you could just, I guess, like sit around, wait for the characters to go to a place that you kind of want it to be before you make an attack. And I feel like that kind of, yeah, that kind of sucked. That's not the only thing it does well. Tag team attacks and ultimate attacks are also amazing, dishing out major damage and giving buffs to the party members involved. They also have very interesting animations, very funny, humorous, just great, you know. It was one of the best parts about the turn-based system in Yakuza 7 was how good the animations were. They felt full of life and charm and it really carried over in this game. Being able to knock enemies back and knowing exactly where they'll go is great, allowing players to have an extra layer of strategy when they're attacking. Do I want to knock this guy into these explosive containers, a wall, or into his buddy or my buddy for an extra attack? These are the kind of questions you ask yourself when you play this game. These follow-up attacks are unlocked through building relationships with your party members, giving you even more options in battle as you progress through the game. Everyone can also pick up items in the field to smack enemies with as well. If I remember correctly, it was only Ichiban who could do so in Yakuza 7. Little tweaks like this are what Infinite Wealth's combat is, and that's all it really needed to perfect it. Kiryu can also do style switching and heat actions in turn base, which is already pretty fucking insane, but um, he can go a step further. He can actually break the turn base system and say, you know what, this is a beat em up, let's fuck him up. And yeah, that's. I, I don't know. I don't know who wh who it was who decided like yeah let's just implement that for Kiryu uh, but 
props to them. Uh, it, it's, it's really good. Only Kiryu would be able to pull some bullshit off like this. There are so, so, so many other tweaks and additions to combat that I feel it would need its own video to discuss. So I'll just say that it's insanely engaging and fun and I didn't think we'd get a turn-based system this good in a JRPG in an era where a lot of JRPGs have terrible balancing. And I'd like to say it's the best turn-based system I've seen since Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse, but Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance came out the other month and that somehow made the press turn system even better. Crazy, right? I've got a script written out for that game as well, so yeah, that will eventually be turned into a video, but it will um, take a little longer because uh, it is, I think, like twice or thrice the size of this script. Um, yeah, i got a lot to discuss for that game. <laughs> Uh, anyways, back to Yakuza. Somehow though, the combat isn't the only thing this game perfected. The side content was done in a way that puts all other games coming out to shame. Every minigame is unique, short and sweet, and hilarious. This includes the many throwaway minigames that only show up during side quests and never appear again. In your typical Yakuza game, there'd always be a couple of annoying minigames that make achieving 100% irritating. I'm, I'm looking at you, Mahjong. But here I had fun with every single one of them. From the bizarre Uber Eats and Tinder minigames to the Pokemon League and Snap Ripoff, even the massive Animal Crossing type minigame, which I spent way too many hours doing, is amazing. The amount of effort and love the devs poured into this game is evident. Of course, the humor in the form of battles, dialogue, and cutscenes are all still here. Hell, one of the last bosses in the game is just a giant ass shark. Nothing new to an Aussie, but I never thought I'd have to throw hands against one in the game. I'd go as far as to call the gameplay side of Infinite Wealth perfect. So why dock a point when I have nothing but praise for the game and I find it to be the best game I've played since like DMC5 in 2019, why not give it a 10 out of 10 rating? It has to do with the writing. Well the story in Infinite Wealth isn't anywhere near bad and not even remotely close to the worst story in the series. It can feel a little disappointing at times when comparing it or coming off of Yakuza 7 um, and that mostly has to do with the second half of the game. Coming from Yakuza 7's story, it can feel disappointing at times, more so in the second half. It feels like they shoved too much story down our throat in the second half, which is a bit of a common problem with these games. but. This one was pretty noticeable. We have dual protagonists in the second half of the game, and it's a cool idea, but it didn't feel like it was properly executed. The tension is just kind of thrown out the window as we have two parties, one in Hawaii and one in Japan, doing their own thing. We finish a chapter as one party, eager to see more, then it just switches to the other party. By the time we get back to the original party, that eagerness of mine disappeared. It also doesn't help that Ichiban's main story after finding his mum is lacking. And while it's cool to be able to explore his Kiryu again, especially with all the fan service and callbacks, the main story itself takes a hit in return as well, since it felt like they were really condensing the story towards the end. This ruined the pacing of the game for me, like they needed an extra two or three chapters or something. That and Kiryu's party isn't all too great. Ichiban is an incredible protagonist for this era of Yakuza because his personality works really well with a JRPG styled game. He is impossible to dislike and is as bright as the sun. Kiryu on the other hand is a lot quieter and stoic and that worked incredibly for his series of games to show how his circumstances get worse with each game because he refuses to lean on anyone. And in that respect, I like what this game does to contrast Kiryu with Ichiban, showing the differences in how they both try to handle these absurd situations. And then also showing us the outcome of Kiryu's arc from Yakuza 6 to the end of Infinite Wealth. I just wish they gave it more time to simmer in the game for it to hit even harder than it did. Cause that ending did hit super hard, but I know it could have gone a step further. And I also wish they gave the party he was with more time to grow together, because that's exactly what Yakuza 7 did. The pacing of the story in that game is incredible and I love every moment of it. Even the stupidly ridiculous mirror face. We see the characters naturally come together and grow and change in that game. Here though, Curious Party feels like one of those random group assignments you get at school where no one really knows how to speak to one another. Um, and so instead we get a lot of the rest of the party just fangirling over Kiryu, and, and I get it, it's, it's Kiryu Kazuma. At this point in the story, he is a mythical legend, but I do wish there was more. 
The drink links kinda remedy this, but they could have still had stronger chemistry as a group as the story went on, which it didn't really have. The life links were great though, since they added a lot more to Kiryu's story in this game and just his character in general. Another thing I wasn't a fan of was Ichiban and Saiko's relationship. I'm all for romance for Ichiban, someone needs a happy romance in these games, but the way they handled it felt out of character for both Ichiban and Sayako. I like what they did at the start, but then they never followed up on it till literally the end of the game, and even then it's treated like a gag. It just feels so empty and disappointing. I wish they fleshed out their relationship and their issues from the start of the game, if they're going to make them a couple in the following games. If they do follow through with it in Yakuza 9, I hope they actually spend time forming a proper relationship or building a proper relationship between the two because as it is it's like it's just all jokes and I don't really like that uh, personally I feel like it's kind of a slap in the face to both of their characters and so yeah because there's something there and I feel like they can actually do something pretty good with it um, I have some other problems with the game but they're mostly nitpicks uh, not the devs fault but the nonsense that is New Game Plus and Hard Legend mode being locked behind a large paywall is pure stupidity. It is nonsense. It's so stupid. Um, they should be ashamed of themselves. But yeah, other than that, they've made two of my favorite Yakuza games back to back. And that is a triumph in and of itself. And that alone makes me a happy gamer. Um, let's see if they can go for a hat trick. First Apple 2K video actually done. Actually, actually done. That's crazy. The first Apple 2K.